Please observe the following warnings before operating your propane burners. Residual fuel in propane burners will support a flame for several minutes after the fuel flow has been shut off. Confirm that all flame has been extinguished before attempting any operation that could release flammable vapors. Position the unit broadside to wind whenever possible to prevent volatile fumes from drifting toward burners. Flues must be covered by a minimum of 6 inches of material when the burners are in operation. Do not remove material from the tank in any manner when the burners are in operation. Do not drive the unit when burners are operating. Do not operate the burners if the tank is damaged or leaking. When burners go out, allow flues to ventilate for several minutes before relighting burners. Do not heat material beyond the manufacturer's recommended temperature. Do not heat material over 200 degrees Fahrenheit if moisture is present in the tank. To prevent possible burns from material overflow, allow sufficient space in the tank for expansion of material when heating. Always shut off burners using the main shutoff valve on the supply tank. Always use a torch to light the burners. Light the inside burner first. Do not reach across a lighted burner to relight the inside burner. Check the overflow tube for restrictions. Always have a dry chemical type fire extinguisher available and in good condition. Two types of propane supply tanks are available. Tanks for liquid type burners and tanks for vapor type burners. The propane burners on your Etnire distributor require a supply tank for liquid type burners. Liquid type burners will operate from a vapor withdrawal tank, however, the amount of heat delivered will be dramatically reduced and the life of the burner will be shortened. The main shutoff valve and bleeder valves are closed by turning their knobs clockwise. The bleeder valves are equipped with a bypass orifice to prevent trapping pressure in the system when they are closed, which means that they do not completely shut off propane to the burners. The upper burner can be shut off completely through the upper burner shutoff valve. The upper burner shutoff valve is closed by turning the handle perpendicular to the valve. The safety valve located in the supply line between the tank and the regulator should be kept clean and free from debris so that it can relieve if excessive pressure ever develops in the line. Experimentation with pressure settings will allow you to determine the most efficient setting. A good rule of thumb for setting the pressure regulator is based on the size of the asphalt tank. 1000 to 1250 gallons, 15 psi. 1500 to 1750 gallons, 20 psi. 2000 to 2250 gallons, 25 psi. 2250 to 2500 gallons, 30 psi. 2750 and up gallons, 40 psi. The burners are vaporizing burners, which means that they convert liquid propane to vapor in the coils of the burner. When the burners are operating correctly, the system will frost over from the regulator to the first coil of the burner. If frost does not form, it's an indication that the burners are operating on vapor instead of liquid. This condition must be corrected immediately to prevent damage to the burners. If frost does form, but then the flame diminishes and the frost melts, it's an indication that there is moisture in the tank. Moisture in the tank will freeze in the system. Propane suppliers can add an antifreeze agent to eliminate moisture.
Ensure that there is at least six inches of material covering the flue that will be used for heating before proceeding. Open the exhaust stack damper or cover. Close the valves at the burners. Ignite the burner torch and place in the lower flue. Open the supply valve slowly. Set the LP pressure. Circulate material in the tank at 150 gallons per minute. With the lower burner ignited, adjust the lower burner valve to increase the flame. When using the upper burner, first open the upper burner shutoff valve. Insert the burner torch in the upper flue. Adjust the upper burner valve to increase flame. When shutting down, close the supply valve before closing the valves at the burners to exhaust all LP. When the burner is off, Close the exhaust stack damper or cover to prevent heat loss. The safety valve located in the supply line between the tank and the regulator should be kept clean and free from debris so that it can relieve if excessive pressure ever develops in the line. There is a different safety valve located after the regulator that should also be kept clean and free from debris. Experimentation with pressure settings will allow you to determine the most efficient setting. A good rule of thumb for setting the pressure regulator is based on the size of the asphalt tank. 1000 to 1250 gallons, 15 psi. 1500 to 1750 gallons, 20 psi. 2000 to 2250 gallons, 25 psi. 2250 to 2500 gallons, 30 psi. 2750 and up gallons, 40 psi. The burners are vaporizing burners, which means that they convert liquid propane to vapor in the coils of the burner. When the burners are operating correctly, the system will frost over from the regulator to the first coil of the burner. If frost does not form, it's an indication that the burners are operating on vapor instead of liquid. This condition must be corrected immediately to prevent damage to the burners. If frost does form, but then the flame diminishes and the frost melts, it's an indication that there is moisture in the tank. Moisture in the tank will freeze in the system. Propane suppliers can add an anti-freeze agent to eliminate moisture. Please note, if the power switch or emergency stop switch is turned off during burner operation, the burners will turn off and will not turn back on without cycling the burner switches. If the distributor is driven faster than 300 feet per minute or if hand spray, unload, transfer, flush, or auxiliary is selected during burner operation, the burners will turn off and will not turn back on without cycling the burner switches. Without the optional thermostatic controls installed, 999 will be displayed in place of the actual temperature and the burners will only be allowed to operate for 15 minutes without further operator input. The burners will automatically shut down if the built-in timer is allowed to expire. The timer can be reset by the operator at any time through the timer reset switch. During the last five minutes of the timer interval, the message burner timer ending 
will be displayed on the screen. The burners will not turn back on without cycling the burner switches. If a burner fails to ignite, it will go into lockout and will not turn back on without cycling the burner switch. The controller will allow four tries for ignition before going to lockout. Each try for ignition will be three seconds on for the electrode and the low flow solenoid valve, followed by being off for six seconds. Once a flame is sensed, the tries for ignition will be reset. Ensure that there is at least 6 inches of material covering the flue that will be used for heating before proceeding. Open the exhaust stack damper or cover. Open the supply valve slowly. Set the LP pressure. Circulate material in the tank at 150 gallons per minute. Turn the burner switch on that will be used for heating. When shutting down, close the supply valve and turn the burner switch to off to exhaust all LP. When the burner is off, close the exhaust stack damper or cover to prevent heat loss. The order of LEDs for the controller LED fault are as follows. The green power LED on when power is applied to the control. The green high valve LED on when the high valve output is on. The green spark LED on when spark output is pulsing. The red flame LED on when command applied, no faults and flame detected. The green low valve LED on when low valve output is on. The fault flash patterns of the red LED are as follows. One flash, high valve output shorted to 12 volts. Two flashes, high valve output over current or shorted to ground. Three flashes, low valve output shorted to 12 volts. Four flashes, low valve output over current or shorted to ground. Five flashes, lockout, failure to ignite. Six flashes, flame fault, flame present at startup. Faults are cleared with the command input. After setting the target temperature in the display, the burners can be operated. The target temperature is reset to 95 degrees Fahrenheit when the system power is turned on and can be changed in 5 degree increments. The timer will allow 15 minute heating intervals if the temperature sender is out of range or 60 minute intervals otherwise. If the temperature sender is out of range, 999 is displayed in place of the actual temperature. The timer can be reset by the operator at any time through the timer reset switch. During the last five minutes of the timer interval, the message burner timer ending will be displayed on the screen. The burners will also turn off if the temperature sender goes out of range during burner operation. 
In all conditions, the burners will not turn back on without cycling the burner switches.